This summer, I took some time off up at a cottage with some friends and was, understandably, expected to be in charge of coffee for the group. A task that I will gladly take on any day to avoid drinking Keurig or instant coffee for a week straight. Problem was, out of all the coffee equipment that I own, I didn't have anything capable of batch brewing for 16 people. And that's where this came in. A cult classic in the coffee world that has remained a favorite, even in the growing and notoriously picky world of specialty coffee. The Mocha Master. It's got the looks, but did it actually make good coffee? Let's find out. Now before we get going, this video is sponsored by me. I bought this machine completely with my own money, and if you do want to check it out, I will have it linked down in the description below. If you found this video helpful in absolutely any way, using that link really helps with the channel at absolutely no cost to you. Starting off with the build quality and design, the Mocha Master is about as classic looking as you can get in a modern day batch brewer. And I made sure to pick it in this so bad it's kind of good pistachio green color to round out those retro vibes. However, if this look is a bit too much for you, Mocha Master does have a surprisingly large assortment of colors to choose from. Although looks are always subjective, I really like the appearance of this brewer. It's not trying to be anything that it's not, and it embraces the company's long hand-built heritage. In terms of build quality, however, I was a bit torn. During unboxing, I was unpleasantly surprised by just how cheap and plasticky certain components felt. Personally, I'm not someone who has an issue with plastic being used. There are plenty of safe, high temperature plastics out there, but it's just more the feel of the plastics that left me a bit disappointed. The plastic components were thin, lightweight, and flimsy feeling in the brewing cone and the arm that it sits on in particular. The rest of the build, however, is good. Mocha Master is very proud of the fact that these machines have been hand built in the Netherlands since 1968, and they should be. Hot water only travels through a glass and metal water path, and the machine, while lightweight, feels solid and well put together. First time setup and assembly was dead simple. Put on the shower arm, the cone and lids, and you're good to go. When it comes to brewing coffee, there's no faffing about with settings or programming. It uses standard number four conical filters that you can find absolutely anywhere. Just add in your coffee, pour in the appropriate amount of water for your brew ratio, hit go, and a few minutes later you have a big pot of coffee. Now there is a stopper that allows you to pull out the craft mid-brew without spilling, and it does a very good job of immediately stopping the flow when you do, although I'd obviously recommend letting the batch finish completely so you don't have unevenly extracted cups. The user experience of the Mocha Master is decidedly simple. Yes, other machines have the ability to change the temperature, program in pre-infusions and pouring recipes, but that's not really the ethos behind this machine. It wants to be a dependable tool that can make good coffee for many people without you needing to think about it more than you have to. And I sort of like that. The settings that I picture using this machine in are with friends and family around, and I can't be bothered to be sitting in the corner making 10 individual pour overs just to maximize quality, or teaching people how to fiddle with a complicated machine just to get a single pot brewing if I'm not in the room. Now, you may have noticed that there is one other switch on the front of the machine right beside the power button, and this is a toggle that slows the flow rate of the water and decreases the hot plate temperature for partial pots. This is a useful adjustment that can improve the quality of smaller batches if you plan to only serve a few people some mornings. And this brings us to the coffee quality. The first disclaimer that immediately needs to be made is that the coffee that comes out of the Mocha Master will only be as good as the quality of coffee you put in, and if you grind your own coffee, the grinder you choose to use. This machine is not going to make drastically better coffee when fed with low quality inputs. I will always have some great coffee linked down in the description below, which also happens to be the same coffee I was brewing on this particular weekend. And for the grinder, I was using the Fellow Ode Gen 2. This combination of the Mocha Master and Fellow Ode was a fantastic minimal setup that could absolutely pump out batch after batch all weekend long, and quietly, which was nice for slower mornings. My gauge of a good drip brewer is how close it can come to the taste of a single cup made with a manual pour over using the same coffee and grinder. And this is where I was most surprised with the Mocha Master. The water distribution is not exactly ideal. The brewer is conical, not flat, which I usually prefer. But regardless of these things, the coffee it was producing was darn good and surprisingly similar to a single pour over I would have made with the same coffee. 
I think that the slight flow limiting effect of the cone compensates largely for the water distribution, leading to a quasi immersion brew depending on the grind size to use. In reality, I don't know the exact reason and I don't know if I need to, but I do know what I was tasting and that I was impressed by it. I was also able to make smaller two to three cup batches with equal success using that lower flow mode, which is not something I can say for all drip systems I've used in the past, which often produce watery or underwhelming results when used with lower doses. One possible negative of the Mocha Master and something that has led to many people suggesting aftermarket modifications is the fact that it does use a hot plate. Hot plates, while effective, do tend to significantly change the taste of the coffee when left in the carafe for extended periods of time. If there is one thing I could change about this machine, it would be swapping out that hot plate setup for an insulated carafe. However, if you do opt to get this machine, I do not recommend modding it as disabling the hot plate would void the warranty. Personally, I didn't find this to be a significant issue as the coffee made on this machine generally got drank within five to 10 minutes of the brew ending. But if you are someone who wants to leave coffee sitting there for a long period of time and keep going back to it, then I might suggest going a different route. In case you can't tell, I really liked the Mocha Master over the relatively short but thorough testing period I put it through. Reviewing coffee equipment can admittedly get a little bit repetitive, and the Mocha Master was a pleasant surprise that I just didn't see coming. I was not only very impressed by the coffee it produced, but also just fell in love with this thing for the simplicity, its retro charm, and the memories that I now associate with using it. If you're looking for a great way to serve a larger group, this is definitely an option I recommend checking out. Again, if you want to do so, I will have the Mocha Master linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.